I was there at the beginning, inside the Clinton machine. I saw it all happen, from the corrupt to the absolutely corrupt. And that's when I thought about my father, who was dying of lung cancer, and what he would do if he knew the man I'd become. And then I thought about my daughter. What if the cocaine they were bringing in was to end up getting used by her? I hit my knees that day and asked God to forgive me. I wasn't a good person. I worked in special operations, Central America, South America. I did a lot of bad things. But I hit the bottom that day and said I was going to make up for it. And now, I just want to see these criminals brought to justice and get their just due, not made president, but put where they belong, in jail. One thing about Hillary, Bill was just a good timing guy, but Hillary, she's an animal. Hillary is the one that I promise you she pulls the strings. She pulled them in Arkansas. She pulled them in the White House when she was there as the First Lady. And my God, if she gets to be president, what you see out here now is gonna change. We thought it changed with Obama. There's nothing compared to what's gonna happen with Hillary. And I tell you right now, I will stop Hillary. We've gone further than anybody we know of, and that's all we're going to say. And people can ask us a hundred different ways and you know, from a hundred different directions. And we're just going to leave the ultimate decision up to the American people. I really uh, just want everybody to take a deep breath and relax and just, you know, sit back because here they come again. We're going to have to just ride through this as we have so many of these other um, false accusations. Let me get the air clear about this. The email scandal, I believe, was brought out by the Clintons. Now, I would be pleased to talk more about this important matter, but I know there have been questions about my email, so I want to address that directly, and then I will take a few questions from you. You see, we knew running for election, you never want to run as the anointed one. You always want to run as the underdog. Now, it's kind of hard when you're building Hillary Clinton with all the hoopla and who they are now. How do you get to be the underdog? If you look at the email scandal, where did the email scandal come from? The New York Times. The New York Times has never been anything but a PR firm for the Clintons. Even if they had it, there is no way the New York Times would have broke a story about Hillary that could do damage to her. But look what she's done. They have used the email scandal to catapult them into an underdog status. Now, as we get closer to the election, when you get through the primary and you get into the general election, I can tell you, New York Times, read my lips. Go ahead and write the articles, probably already written. Right when they get into the general election, you know what they're gonna say? They're gonna say, oh, we've checked all this out and it turns out there was nothing to it. That's what's gonna happen. It's all used to stage Hillary. Now, if you don't believe me, remember when Hillary ran against Barack Hussein Obama? She should have used our system then, but she didn't. She came in and she was the anointed one. And he whooped her. She's not making that mistake this time. 
And by the way, if you notice, Hillary's also done the other thing you have to do at the formative stage of a campaign. She's going around, she's sucked up all of the money that's out there. So anybody tries to run against her, I hear people ask me, what do you think about Biden? I don't think about anybody. What are they going to run against her with? They have already laid claim to the money. Once uh, the American public begins to see the emails, uh, they will have an unprecedented insight into uh, a high government official's uh, daily communications, which I think will be uh, quite uh, interesting. You may have seen that I recently launched a Snapchat account. Those messages disappear all by themselves. You see, when Hillary gets in office within six months, According to the plan we wrote back in 1986, literally there's a plan called the 86 plan, and it's where we finalized and put everything down. Within six months, she will make Bill ambassador to the UN. When Bill gets to be ambassador to the UN, it won't be six months then because of the Clinton Foundation, what they've used the Clinton Foundation for, it won't be six months until he's made Secretary General of the UN. Now, can you imagine the power Bill and Hillary have? I mean, they will have achieved more power than any couple in the history of the world when they pull that stunt. On January 20th, 1993, William Jefferson Clinton became the 42nd President of the United States. At the time, most Americans were not aware of the extent of Clinton's criminal background, nor were they aware of the media blackout, which kept this information from the public. As State Attorney General and later Governor, Bill Clinton in 12 years achieved absolute control over the political, legal, and financial systems of Arkansas. As president, he would attempt to do the same with the nation by bringing members of his inner circle with him to Washington. The hijacking of America was underway, and its impact on future generations would be incalculable. It was years, years ago when uh, I was picked up by a man named Mr. Witt Stevens. And Mr. Witt was the brother to Jack Stevens, Jackson Stevens. And they were the king makers in Arkansas. So they called me one day and said, we need to meet with you. And I met with them and they said, we need you uh, to take a look, see at a guy that we think we can make governor and we want him to be the youngest governor in the history of the country. So I agreed, and then uh, that's when I met Bill. When I met with him, it was kind of weird because I was talking to him, and he was chasing after the waitresses. and. Uh, I would try to get his focus, and all he would do is just chase after the waitress, just watch, man, I want some of that, man, I want some of that, and it just went on and on and on. And finally to the point where I had actually gotten a little bit perturbed about it and said, man, this, you know, we gotta figure this out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was attorney general at the time, and so, I went back the next day to Mr. Witt and told him what I thought. I said, Mr. Witt, this guy is, is a sexual predator. He's not just a womanizer. I mean, I'm telling you, this guy's sick. And uh, he's a pathological liar. I mean, and I told Mr. Witt, I couldn't even make him tell the truth. And when it came to something he could tell the truth on, that would be harmless to him, he still couldn't tell him. Well, Mr. Witt said, you can break him, break him of that, we'll, we'll have a talk. So I figured, what the heck. A couple, three weeks passed, 
<clears throat> they met with Bill. Apparently, they got everything worked out the way they wanted it. And he was in the game running for governor. Tonight, I ask all of you who have stood with me. I ask my opponents and those who have fought with them in their hard-fought campaign. I ask those who have believed in me and those who have doubted to join with me in common purpose. Let us put aside our fears for our hopes. Let us trust each other and work to forge a future that will enrich the lives of our people, a future that will strengthen our traditions and our faith, a future that will make us proud that in our time we gave our best. God bless you all and thank you very much. No, they didn't tell me anything about it. They didn't say anything to me about it. The airport in question, uh, a matter for federal jurisdiction, the state really had next to nothing to do with it. We had nothing, zero, to do with it. And everybody who's ever looked into it knows that. Your president, the president of the United States, not only was a part of the system that was laundering millions of cocaine dollars, your president signed off on it. He can't deny that he did. You see, because of that, there's one little catch. Every loan that ADPA made, Bill Clinton himself had to sign off on it. More than Bill Clinton, you better identify the people in the loop of the drug running. You better identify the people in the loop for money laundering. And what you'll find there is those people go straight to Washington. Act 1062, if you look at it, it says that ADPA was developed and created to provide low-interest bond loans for churches, schools, colleges. So now look what happened to our legislature. They voted on a bill creating ADPA, thinking that they were getting money to colleges and schools to buy books and so forth. What better way to run thousands of tens of millions of dollars, launder it, clean it up, and use the cover of a state agency to do it. When Oliver North, Poindexter, and those guys got KO'd, knocked out of the box because of Iran-Contra, I was asked to come down and help, and I did. I had to cut loose from there. It, it got bad. There was something happened with a little girl and her mother that I don't want to go over but it fried my brain, and it was time to quit. My family said that why didn't I get in touch with my buddy Bill Clinton and get a job with the state and get out of that racket. I called Bill, and uh, Bill said, you bet, we've got a place for you. And he brought me on to this agency called the Arkansas Development Finance Authority. Now, as much as I had had involvement with state government, I had never heard of that agency. And I was surprised to find out that its mission statement was that it would make low interest bond loans to churches, schools, libraries, which was kind of odd because it also made loans to industry. Well, the problem with that was we already had an Arkansas Industrial Development Commission and it was duplicating the work. What I found after about a couple of weeks of being there is it was strictly there for Friends of Bill. We didn't loan money to churches. We didn't make low interest bond loans to schools. We made low interest bond loans to Friends of Bill. Jennifer Flowers, in a tabloid interview for which she was paid, says she carried on a long-term affair with Governor Clinton from the late 1970s through the end of 1989. Are you prepared tonight to say that you've never had an extramarital affair? I'm not prepared tonight to say that any married couple should ever discuss that with anyone but themselves. Paul Paul Towers is the... Uh place where Jennifer Flowers had an apartment. Anybody in power in Arkansas knew Bill with his girlfriends and all that, but nobody would dare talk about it. 
I filed a lawsuit and I brought them out. I named them. One of the women was Jennifer Flowers. Well, as was the day, Clintons controlled the media here. They wouldn't touch anything. I had a big press conference on the steps of the Capitol. All the media in the state was there. I walked all the way down the hall. They got it. They videoed me walking to the hall. Go to Bill's office, throw the lawsuit across his desk. Pretty dramatic, I might say. Nobody covered it. Nobody. Eventually, every allegation stemming from Nichols' 1990 lawsuit and press conference would prove valid regarding Clinton's sexual liaisons, his drug usage, and his criminal activities relating to ADFA and Whitewater. Gradually, the women who had carried on adulterous affairs with Clinton began to emerge. Betsy Wright, Clinton's former chief of staff, admitted she had been hired to conduct media smear campaigns against anyone planning to tell the truth about the governor's sexual habits. She was prepared to go after at least 26 women who had the potential of destroying Clinton's chance at the presidency. During the 1992 presidential campaign, uh, I was getting bludgeoned by the media because Jennifer Flowers had come out of my lawsuit. A man called me on the phone on a Monday. His name was Gary Johnson. He was an attorney. He told me that he felt bad because I was being bludgeoned and he wanted to talk to me about handling my case. Well, I was craving an attorney, any attorney to help me. You know, I saw Larry out there doing battle, so to speak, on his own, and I felt like he needed some help. I met him on a Tuesday. He was a special attorney. I didn't even know it. You see, he lived next door to Jennifer Flowers. He told me that he had bought a bicycle and there was a lot of theft in and up and down the halls of, of the apartment complex. So he put a camera so he could watch his bicycle. Well, guess what he caught on camera? He caught Bill Clinton going in and out of Jennifer's apartment with a key. Well, so he knew I was telling the truth about the woman. I was, he certainly knew I was telling the truth about Jennifer. So I said, great. I said, you, you can get on board, but I warned him. I said, Gary, you got to be careful. He said, oh, nothing's going to happen to me. I'm not scared of it. There was a Friday that we were supposed to meet, and I called. He didn't answer. Well, I called his office all day. He didn't answer. His office hadn't heard from him. That Saturday, we went to his apartment. <coughs> and found him. He had been bludgeoned, he had been beat horribly, and he had literally been left for dead. What was significant about the beating he took, the licks that he took were specific. For example, they hit him in just such a way, military hand-to-hand -hand hit him in such a way that they ruptured his spleen. <clears throat> they did all kinds of things that would kill you. We found him, got him to the hospital, he made it, but to this day, to my knowledge, he still just half insane. It scared him so bad that uh, for a while, I don't know if he still is, but for a while, he literally was in a mental institution. It, it scared him so bad. So that's the importance of Quapaw Towers. That's where it all began. Now what's the story nobody really knows? You know, guys, when Bill Clinton was in that first race, when I did Jennifer Flowers, Bill was running like seventh or eighth. I mean, he couldn't get any traction whatsoever. When Jennifer's story broke, in all the frenzy about that, he jumped up to number two. So in a way, my trying to get him backfired in my face. And instead of getting him, I elevated him. And the rest is history. Now, remember, I got him to number two. But because of all of the womanizing stuff, people started doing what they're going to do for Hillary. You see, they're playing this right. 
Hillary's not saying anything about it. She's letting her numbers go down because if you're going to win, you got to run. If you're at Clinton and you want to win, you've got to run from a position of being an underdog because everybody loves an underdog, right? Well, how if you're a Clinton do you get to be an underdog when you've got somebody like Bernie Sanders running against you? I mean, it just doesn't compute, right? Socialist, I mean, there's no way. But now I think you'll understand why this Benghazi stuff was released by New York Times. Do you get it? I'll tell you a couple of stories about fraud. The Bohemian Club, the, as you say, the Bohemian Club, that's where all those rich Republicans go up and stand naked against redwood trees, right? I've never been to the Bohemian Club, but you ought to go. It'd be good for you. Get some fresh air. I know nothing about the Bohemian Grove with Bill. I know about once a month, Hillary would go out to Los Angeles. And she did it so regular that it became a bit of an issue trying to, why is she always going? Bill told me that she was going out there, she and a group of women, and she would be a part of a witch's church. And, uh, man, I, when Bill told me that, you could have hit me with a baseball bat. I tried to point out to him. He realized what had happened if that got out. Of course, my job is to make sure it didn't get out. Now, I don't know today if Hillary still partakes in <clears throat> the witch ritual. I, I don't know that I even know what the ritual was. But for the better part of many years, Hillary would go quite often, whether it was regularly once a month or maybe once every couple of months, she would go out on a weekend simply to be a part of it. The great story here for anybody willing to find it and write about it and explain it is this vast right-wing conspiracy that has been conspiring against my husband since the day he announced for president. You know, it's so sad that when something tragic happens that people, maybe out of a desperate attempt to make sense of the world, try to create conspiracies and, you know, act paranoid and all that. But some of it is not explainable except for people who just want to cause trouble. You, you let it rub off you. Yeah, you mm -hmm. have to. Rolls off. How do I put it into words? When Bill became governor, I believe the paycheck for the governor was 28,000 a year. Hardly the kind of money that would get you up into the higher earning bracket. Hillary went to the Rose Law Firm. She, Webb Hubble, Vince Foster, they went there because that gave Hillary, once again, it gave her a vehicle that she could use. By Bill being governor, Rose Law Firm being the lobbyist for all types of major industry, which Hillary would facilitate, they made a fortune. You know, Tom and uh, Bill have a lot in common. They both have wives who support them in these uh, efforts that they are engaged in, both uh, emotionally and financially, I might add. Um... The money went to Hillary, not to Bill. So when you try to check out Bill and say, well, gosh, he made a fortune when he was governor, certainly made more than 20-something thousand dollars. That's how they did it. They did it through Hillary and the Rose Law Firm. Got them everything they wanted. The people we are fighting today, we funded 20 years ago. We came, we saw, he died. <laughs> Genetically modified sounds Frankensteinish. Drought resistance sounds really something you want. We cannot let a minority of people, and it's that's what it is, it is a minority of people, hold a viewpoint that terrorizes the majority of people. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. It's no secret 
that we're going up against some pretty powerful forces that will do and spend whatever it takes to advance a very different vision for America. The best way to stop Hillary, let me tell you, there's only one way to stop Hillary. You know, it's not going to be Benghazi. <clears throat> it's not going to be the uh, email scandal. I don't think that'll hurt her. The information I've got that has to do with Vince Foster will carry the day in the end. If Hillary is to be stopped at all, that's what's got to do it. That's why they consider me such a threat. Remember, they Bill said it that, you know, when some reporter asked him who was the worst enemy of the Clintons, he said Larry Nichols in so many words and stuff. There's a reason he says that, because I'm holding the actual files. From the outset, the investigation into the death of Vince Foster has been marred by controversy. At Bill Clinton and Attorney General Janet Reno's insistence, responsibility for the investigation was turned over to the Park Police, even though Foster's death fell within the jurisdiction of the FBI. Not until his death had sufficiently developed into a full-fledged scandal seven months later would the FBI be allowed in. The results of the FBI's investigation, along with the findings of the Park Police and Coroner, were incorporated into a report issued by Special Counsel Robert Fisk. The report, released June 30th, 1994, confirmed suicide as the cause of death. However, a careful examination of key pieces of evidence taken directly from the report itself indicate a number of alarming contradictions inconsistent with the report's own conclusion that Foster took his life. The official coroner's report depicts a large gaping one-inch exit wound located three inches below the crown of Foster's head. According to Fisk, the area surrounding the body at the park was meticulously searched to a depth of 18 inches but no brain tissue or skull fragments were found. An FBI analysis found none of Foster's fingerprints on the gun, despite the fact the gun was found in Foster's hand. However, the FBI did make one extraordinary discovery. One latent fingerprint was visible on the underside of the right pistol grip, approximately two inches from the base of the grip. This print did not belong to Foster. No attempt was made to determine the identity of the person whose print was found in the gun's hand grip. There's another story that you have, which is the Secret Service memo. Now that's where the Park Police officially notified the White House Secret Service that they had found the body of Vincent Foster. And that version, they say they found him in his car, in the parking lot of Fort Marcy Park. And it went so far as to say a 38 caliber revolver was found in the car with him. It went into detail saying that there was a six pack of Bartle and James wine cooters in the front seat. One that had been opened and he drank it, the others hadn't been opened. It said his briefcase was in the back seat. It's in detail. That story, she can't run away from. And I know people say, well, good God, Larry, that's Vince Foster, that's old news. No, that's a death. Statute of limitations does not exist for that case. I'm not saying Bill and Hillary killed him. I'm not saying they had him killed. I don't know. I truly do not know. But what I do know is they moved that body. They moved his body. Then you have to ask why. Why did they move his body? Because where he died would have been under the DC, Washington DC police, and had that have been discovered, something would have come out. And that would have been the mitigating circumstances. And that circumstance would have been that Vince and Hillary had a long standing affair. If that story had to come out with the death of Vince Foster, that Hillary was the first first lady in American history to be caught having an affair on the president, I assure you, gentlemen, Hillary wouldn't be running for president today. That is why I am running for President of the United States.
people want to know Hillary. The Hillary that I knew back here in Arkansas. When she was in the Benghazi hearings, when she said, what difference does it make? They're dead. What difference at this point does it make? That's the Hillary I know. And that's the Hillary that we don't want to unleash on America. You know, I don't care about their little things they do. I don't care about who they sleep with, what they slept with. What I care about is our country and what's going to happen to my grandbabies. So therefore, I'm bound, honor bound, as I know Alex is, to try and stop it. That's what we're going to do, one way or the other. We will stop it. You know, we're incredibly close to losing our country, incredibly. And it's more than just Hillary. It's the Congress becoming traitors, turning us. You know, Washington is just a cesspool of traitors. That's why I have a plan that I plan to introduce. And basically, the short version of it, states' rights. Washington has no power at all. It ain't got the power to do any of the stuff it's doing unless we, through our states, exceed that power to them. Where I stand, where you stand, that's the ground you protect, right there. Don't let Washington come get it. Don't let Washington come get it. You take care of it. It's right there in front of you. Say, this is mine and you can't take it. If we do that, we'll be all right. If we don't, generations to come will never see what we've had. Never. That's my story, and I guess I'm sticking to it. Globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding and making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the info war to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv.